Hi, welcome back to Terrapin Glass Blowing Studios here in Jaffrey, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Lewis, a torch worker. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and finish up this goblet you all have been tuning in to see each week. It's going to be beautiful. All right. The flare this end open. Sure, it's nice and flat. Now we're ready to do the coil pot on this thing. Tear off some of the junk on the end of this. And start coiling. Again, we're not going to want to coil too high or too much because you don't need that much color for a lip wrap. I'm already starting to come back in and form my ball and I'll be sealing it off right there. Now we go ahead and reheat and melt back in and blow it out a few times so we can get this nice and uniform and ready to apply to the cup. Just about there. One more reheat and then blow out and we're ready to pop that hole. Then we go back in with a pin flame at the 90 degree angle towards the flame. Get that nice and hot. Give it a puff so you get more of a point. Just about ready to pop it. Now if you're all wondering how I know when I got the glass in the flame, when I touch it into the side of the flame here, it reacts to the flame, so I know that I actually have the glass in the flame, so I can start blowing and it'll pop. I mean, honestly, you should learn with a, with a hose. I, uh, I was without a hose for so long that I had to adapt and learn how to do it without a hose, so now I think if I started using a hose, it would probably mess me up. But I do plan on getting one soon anyways. All right, that's pretty much ready to go on to the cup. Now I got a nice pretty kiln dust all over the cup. Now I gotta wipe that off with my rag. Hole's a little off, so I gotta open up this guy just a touch more. better. Now we're going to go ahead and attach it. This side's already pretty hot. Got to get the other side hot for the weld. Whistling glass is always good glass. That's when you know you got a nice circle. Go ahead and attach them. Give them a little weld. Once you got that all ready, I'm gonna make this more of a pin flame here, so I gotta let this cool down for a second. Hang it upside down so it stays on center. 
Go for that pin flame so I could terminate this off the tube. And again, it usually leaves a little clear up top there. You just pick it right out, no problem. Pulling it out like that makes it all on, keeps it all on center too. Now we're ready to just heat this bad boy up and get it part of the cup. It's getting there. That lip wrap actually came out a little off center, but we're going to work with it, see what we come up with. All right, I think I'm ready to go ahead and open up the cup. I'm gonna come in here again. Tight flame, kiss the end of that color with that perfect 90 degree angle. Give it a puff, a little bit more of a point on the end, go back at it. And then we're going to pop it. All right. I think right. Let's start opening it up now. It's very, very light pressure I'm using to get this opened up. And as you can see, I'm doing the same thing I did last time. Going from marble size up. I'll be hopping on the big flame here in a minute just so I can get this to work a lot quicker. Let's do that now. So now I got this guy going. It's all heated up nice, flatten the top a bit. Go ahead and stick that rubber stopper in the bottom of that so I don't get heat traveling up this thing again and burn my fingers. Try and get the uh, end of this thing nice and hot so I can go ahead and just open it right up to the desired, desired opening.
flatten in the top a little bit. Making the top look prettier. A little paddle shaping. Say we're about done with the top. Nah, it's a little off center, but it's kind of what I expected. I didn't expect the perfect goblet the first time after a year of not making one. You guys get the idea, though. So now I'm going to go in, heat my tool, get that around the top of the cup. I'm going to terminate this off the tube. Then we're going to focus on making the stem. my rubber stopper out of there too. Again, I'm gonna go and let it fall in the center. Got nice and hot. I'll go ahead and apply a dab of the multi to the bottom of this like I did the other one. And I think I'm just going to do a simple clear Simple clear stem for this guy. Add a nice dab of that color. Work that back down on center. And then just let it hang for a second and cool. All right. So that's the cup. I'm going to go ahead and put this in here, let this chill out for a minute. And go ahead and attack the stem now. Grab one of my rods. Clean the end off. I think I'm going to leave the two ends of this stem pretty much the same diameter of this rod. So I'm just going to melt that back in and let that cool for a second. 
I'll attach a punny and I'll heat in between those two points and I'll start stretching it for the stem. Make the point for my punny. A little bit of color on there, so I'll just tag it real quick and pull it. Nice point and clean it at the same time. Heat up this punny. Tag it on the end, push it in, make sure it's all on center. Then start heating it up so you can pull it out. Now, since it's a goblet, I suppose you should stick the traditional goblets and keep it a short stem. So I'm just looking for general heat base here in the clear. I don't want to heat up the end there because like I said, I want to keep the diameters of the rod basically the same on each side. So I heat it up like that, give it a bit of a pull. Don't want to pull too much because you don't want a thin stem. You always want to keep spinning it too to keep that on center. You want to keep that stem nice and straight. So now that I have the stem, it's a nice short stem like I was saying, I'm going to come in a little bit further than that point and terminate it. That way I can work it back down to the same diameter without pulling off too much glass and having it be, you know, the end of it being here where the diameter of the glass is a lot smaller. Come up high a little bit on the rod, terminate it up there, and then it'll just take and pick off the excess. Make it all nice and round like the other side. <clears throat> Thinking now I should have actually punnied up my foot and put that in the kiln first, because now I'm gonna have to pull that out and punny it up anyways. Oh well. All right, so I got that good. I got just barely a little bit of excess on here. I'm just going to tear off a little bit. I'll work that back in. Now I've got that pretty much ready to go onto the cup. So using my ball grabbers, I'm going to go ahead and heat these up a little bit and pull that cup back out and attach the cup to the, to the stem. Then after that, I'm going to take that foot out, put a punny on the bottom of it, so it'll be easier for me to attach that without having to use the ball grabbers. Wipe off the kiln dust. This is probably always the hardest part of making a goblet, is making sure that your stem and your foot all line up. Weld that on there nice and good. Once I have that on there, I like to give it the old gravity bit there to put it on center. Always helps. All right, I'm pretty happy with that so far. Now that I have that on there, and it's welded on there good without any de-vitrification, which means the glass was still moving as it cooled and would cause frost that's really stressful for the glass. So now I snap that off, polish the end of this guy, so that this will be ready to accept the foot.
So I'm not going to put this all the way back in the kiln because if I can let this cool off enough so I can grab the end of it, that would be sweet. So I'm just going to stick the part in there that I'm going to be using. Well, I might have to stick more of it in there than I want to. I'm going to go in and get that foot so I can put the front punny on it. Wipe in some kiln dust off, hoping this thing doesn't fall out of the ball grabbers. All right, coming in with my punny. Now this ought to be fun. I should have done this before while I was attached to everything, but. Yep, didn't want to do that. There we go. All right. Now since this thing is still really hot, oh, it just cracked on me. Well, that's that. <laughs> Sometimes in glass blowing you'll have problems and that's a problem. I just caused a stress point on the glass so it cracked out on me. So now I gotta make another foot. Oh well. I've already gone ahead and made a new foot because the other one cracked, which happens in life and in glass. Things go wrong, so what do you do? You make a new one and make it work. So I took the piece out, the cup, I took this out already. Uh, this is the top part. The foot is in the kiln right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just reattach it without having to worry about using two ball grabbers and whatnot. But I will use the ball grabbers to grab the foot and attach that on there. Let's get to it. Let's finish this, this goblet up. That kiln dust off of it. This is probably one of the better ways to make a goblet cup is to let your top piece cool so that when you're actually setting the foot on it, you can have it all line up better without messing with a couple hot pieces of glass. It's a lot easier to do it this way. If this was hollow, I would definitely not suggest letting it cool off and then reheating it, but since it's a solid piece of glass we should be all set. So what I'm going to do here is heat up both ends and attach them. After I attach them, I'm going to try and set the foot on here correctly so that it's nice and pretty and on center. It's not easy. All right, getting both points nice and hot. Once they get them nice and hot, I'll go ahead and push them together. Those are nice weld together. Give it a little pull. Put everything in line here. I'm getting some de-vitrification, but I can go back in there and fix that in a little bit. I'm not too worried about it. It's looking pretty good. It's a standing goblet. We have a goblet that stands. So, I'm going to go in here and just zap it real quick, get that divot off there. I'm going to reattach my ball grabber so I can make sure that it stays all in line. All I'm doing is just surface, I'm just hitting the surface of one side. I don't want this to all reheat and melt again, so I'll have to flop it all over the place and refigure out where the center is. Since I have it pretty good right now, I want to leave it pretty good. So zapping the outside. Once I got that done, I'm going to 
Put it right down here. And we've got a finished goblet. Get this thing right in the kiln. We're good to go. So that'll about do it for that goblet. Tune in next time for uh, some more glass stuff going on here at Terrapin Glass Building Studios.